In this video, we're going to cover encryption and decryption in C Sharp. And what I'm going to discuss is why would you ever need to encrypt anything in C Sharp? What is the AES and how to choose the key size when using AES? And what are the best practices when it comes to encryption key management in your application? How do I encrypt and decrypt a string in C Sharp? Before we get to the code examples, let's quickly go over the reasons why you might want to encrypt a string in C Sharp. You can encrypt a string in C Sharp if you want to protect sensitive information, if you want to secure your data when this data is in transmission, when you are sending data over a network, uh, to secure data at rest, to comply with uh, specific regulations, like uh, for instance, if you work in healthcare or if you work in any government organization, also to prevent data tampering, to secure software practices, and to create secure communication channels. So let's start with a simple example, and then we're going to look at another one, which is a bit more complicated, and we're going to analyze the code and see how it works in C Sharp. Now let's take a look at the code and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take a plain text string and I'm going to encrypt it. I'm going to simply print to the screen. I have already coded my classes and my methods, so let's do that. Let's demonstrate how the code works. So I'm going to call this encrypted string equals my script encrypt string. Okay, first I need to generate my encryption key using the test only method and encryption key. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm generating my encryption key, then I'm encrypting the plain text string, which is my password, and then I'm going to print it to the screen. So let's run this program and see how it works. Okay, so this is my encrypted string, and let's run it one more time. Okay, it's a different string, so let's actually do something else quickly, just demonstrate. Okay, let's run the code quickly and see what happens here. Okay, so even though we are using the same encryption key, okay, this is the line that uh, generates our encryption key and inside the loop, we are using the same encryption key. We are getting five different encrypted strings and this is actually quite important if you want to secure your application and now let's uh, take a look at the code and discuss quickly the AES class in C-sharp. Well, now let's take a very quick look at the encryption method that I'm using to encrypt the plain text string. We are using the AES class in C-sharp, which is defined in this namespace here, the system security cryptography namespace. The AES stands for advanced encryption standard, and it is actually a symmetric encryption algorithm and it also is defined for three key sizes. If we take a look at my key generation method, you can see that I am using 128-bit key, but you can also use 192 or 256 one. And let's quickly discuss the different key sizes and when you might want to use a 256-bit key and when you can use 128 one. What is the role of the encryption key in the AES algorithm? The AES algorithm uses the encryption key to change the plain text data, which is our password here, into encrypted data. And this process actually involves multiple rounds of substitution, permutation, and mixing of the plain text. And this is why the key size makes a difference when you choose the 128-bit key, the AES algorithm actually performs 10 rounds and when you use the 192 bit keys the rounds are 12 and the rounds are 14 for the 256 bit keys 
And as with everything else, there is always a trade-off. The 128-bit key, which is the least secure, it's still considered uh, perfect for most practical purposes and it is the most performant, uh, while the 256-bit keys gives you the best security but can use more resources. So it is always up to you to make your choice. Basically, if you're working in banking and dealing with some extremely sensitive data, you're more likely to choose the 256-bit key and if you all you need to do is encrypt your data in transit, then 180-bit key is perfect for your applications. And now let's take another look at my code, the encryption and decryption methods. The first one that I'm using to encrypt the plain text string is my encrypt string method, which uh, takes two input parameters, the plain text string and our encryption key. And this is my decrypt string method. And I just want to discuss the role of the IV, which is the initialization vector, and at this line here, where we generate a random IV. Why do we do that? The reason we get a different encrypted string every time, even though we are using the same key, is because we are generating a random IV in our encrypt string method. You can also use the same initialization vector. You can make it a constant, but that means that if you encrypt the same string with the same key, every single time you're going to get the same encrypted string, which is uh, obviously not good for your security. And the IV adds some randomness to our encryption. Unlike the encryption key, which should be kept secret which uh, you should be very careful how you manage and store your encryption key the initialization vector is not secret it's normally either prepended or appended to your encrypted string and in my case i'm adding it in front of the string i'm prepending the iv and this is why the decrypt method actually works because it uh, can find the iv and decrypt our string so the initialization vector is not a secret, but it adds some randomness to our encryption. Now let's discuss the encryption key management in your application. When you're developing your application and working on your own computer, the two best practices are storing the encryption key in your environmental variables or in a secure local storage such as the secret manager in netcore and of course you can still maybe use the upsettings json file or any other configuration file as long as you remember to exclude it from your source control but this is generally not a very good idea because sooner or later you might push it to remote you might share that file with somebody else and this is probably not a very good idea so stick to the environmental variables and the user secrets and you should be fine in your development environment and when it comes to production you have several options again you can still use the environmental variables but you need to use them with caution and generally you should be using services such as the asia key vault or the aws and google secret managers and you can also use physical devices which what the hardware security modules are what you should not be doing when it comes to key management, you should always avoid hard coding your keys in your source code. And what you should be doing, you should exercise some access control, meaning that you should allow only the authorized people to access your application and you should perform a regular audit and key monitoring as well. In most cases, the crypto helper class that I coded with the encrypt string and the decrypt string methods should be good enough. But if you want to enhance your security, you can use more advanced methods. And let me just show you the advanced crypto helper class that I coded. And I just want to show you the code quickly. If you just want to do some testing locally, then you can freeze the screen. You can copy my code or you can copy the code from any other tutorial. But if you're coding actual application, you should avoid doing that because some of these methods and constructors and code could actually be obsolete, which is why you should always refer to the official documentation and make sure that you follow the latest practices in order to secure your application. But this advanced crypto helper class actually uses password-based key generation and 
generates strong symmetric keys from users, supplied password and sold values. And this actually means that it provides enhanced security. And if you are working with extremely sensitive data, you shouldn't be using a simple class such as the crypto helper class that we used earlier. Again, go to the official documentation, go to Stack Overflow and check the latest post and make sure that you follow the best practices. And that is all for today. And I'd like to explain how encryption and decryption works in C-Sharp with some basic code examples. Thank you for watching.